coming up on FaceTime. You have good intentions with singing this song, but some people might take it in the wrong way. That doesn't bother me. I'm happy existing outside of the mainstream. There is a history of satire in China. I don't think satire necessarily changes the world for the better, mm. but the fact that satire is allowed to exist shows us that the world is a better place than we might sometimes imagine. Wai 我的姐姐的皮肤白 <laughs> Very unique, to say the least. Uh, Sounds good too. Hope that's a compliment. No, it's a compliment. Definitely a compliment. Kevin McGeary, a Northern Irish guitarist vocalist whose satirical Mandarin songs have captivated his host country's attention. In the song, you said you don't like to be known as Lao Wai by Chinese people. Why is that? Well, if you look it up in a dictionary, Lao Wai is a neutral term, which is okay. Mm. But uh, we won't I, go there. <laughs> I don't like being called Lao Wai because I have a name. Yeah. So you're Kevin. Yeah. And you sing songs, and you sing them in Chinese, and you're quite well known on the internet by netizens. How did you come about singing Chinese songs in the first place? I came to China to learn Chinese and I uh, got into the habit of going to KTV because how couldn't I? Mm. And uh, it, I would go almost every night in the second half of 2008 and the first half of 2009 and just accumulated all these uh, lyrics <laughs> in my head. And so it was karaoke that initially it, yes, got you which, into singing? Which itself was a study method. Mm. Before that I had no real interest in, in singing. Your music is unique and sometimes a little bit controversial. Sometimes people might take it the wrong way. Why did you choose this style to express yourself? On a, on a base level, it's that I didn't sing and still don't sing well enough to really be taken seriously. Mm. So I looked for a genre in which you don't have to sing like a, a professional. Mm. Uh, this is one of them. Uh, around the time I was looking for new ideas, I discovered a Canadian band called the Arrogant Worms, mm. who were a huge influence on what I do. On a deeper level, there is a history of satire in China. Mm. The Chinese word for satire, feng tzu, mm. which is modern Chinese, appears in three texts that are over a thousand years old. Oh, okay. Such as the Book of Song, yep. a poem by Gao Pian. So you're just so continuing on a ancient well, tradition, not basically. really. <laughs> tradition I'm more interested in comes from the 1920s yep. when uh, Lin Yutang coined the Chinese word yo mm. which came from the English word humour because before that time uh, Chinese literature was either very very serious or humorous to the point of being uh, facetious yeah. okay. so you could never before about the 20th century you could never there was no tradition of tackling 
serious issues mm. in a comical way. Mm. And it's possible to care about things but still be able to joke about them. Mm. Mm. So that's probably what your music is about, caring about the place, joking about the place to make issues known and also to have a little bit of fun at the same yes. time too. As uh, Horace Walpole, the great statesman, said, uh, to those who feel the world is a tragedy, mm. to those who think the world is a comedy. I don't think satire necessarily changes the world for the better, mm. but the fact that satire is allowed to exist shows us that the world is a better place than we might sometimes imagine. Mm. Mm. Music and satire are global languages. And that understanding has inspired the act of the English literature graduate who found not only teaching and journalism jobs that brought him to the land of opportunity, but also the chance to develop a niche performance series. McGeary stands out amongst the growing group of foreigners singing Chinese songs. Many just play covers. while he sings original pieces with thought-provoking insights about Chinese society, such as social issues including leftover women, migrant workers and even nude photo scandals. All eyebrow-raising stuff. <laughs> Another very interesting song. What was the actual process of writing the song about the migrant workers? Where did the inspiration come from? The inspiration came from walking through Shenzhen and seeing people who hand out leaflets on the street and just wondering what their lives are like mm. outside of this uh, horrible, horrible job. I think that, that the, old, the ones who look older are doubly interesting, that mm. the ones who look about 40 years old and look as if they used to be farmers. If, if I were to write, an, say, a novel about this, it would be a very, very sad, tragic novel. Mm. But I wanted to write something that could fit into three minutes, and I didn't want it to be heavy. Mm. What is the direct message that you want to put out? Uh, I, I agree with W.H. Uh, Auden. Poetry doesn't change anything. Or uh, Yeats, very popular in China, Yeats has said about writers and artists and musicians, mm. he said, we have no gift to, put a set, to set a statesman straight. Uh, music mm. doesn't influence policy, nor should it. Mm. So what do you think the power of music is? I think it's a, it's a cultural bridge yeah. and a soft power tool. Some find his songs offensive and post mindless spite online. Some are not used to such straightforward expressions. After all, critical songs about reality are rare in China. You have good intentions with singing this song, but some people might take it in the wrong way. Have you had any sort of negative reactions online or by people who've heard the song? Well, everybody who is a netizen gets trolled every once in a while. Mm, that's true. Everybody online gets some hate every now and then. Yeah, yeah. which uh, it's better that people take out their hatred online mm. than on the street. Mm. So that doesn't bother me. I'm happy existing outside of the mainstream because yeah. it is just a hobby. Mm. And I do have uh, I have to make something of myself in, in a completely separate career. Mm. So I'm kind of glad that 
my hobby is completely off the wall because yeah. my actual activities are pretty boring. So your daily life's quite rigid and music is a yes. way for you to break out of that life and yeah. explore a little bit. And, and I want daily life to be rigid. Yeah. That suits you? Yes. Speaking of your daily life, you do have another job. Music is not your career. Uh, what else do you do here in China? I taught English for the first few years, like I suppose most people. But at the time I was um, teaching English, learning Chinese was an obsession. So when oh, I really? wasn't teaching in class, I would be learning Chinese or sometimes even have a book under the table. <laughs> I try to learn as much about the place as I can. So. People, people use different windows through which to understand a foreign country. Mm. Some people use music, some people use archaeology, some people use architecture. Mm. Uh, mine, I suppose, are, are language and, and music. Um, mm. So reading Chinese newspapers is a big, mm. big part of what I do. Even, even if I didn't have to, I still would. Mm. Because the Chinese media, the state media, is a, a lot more interesting than people people who don't necessarily know much about China would think, particularly in Guangzhou. Mm. But a lot of very interesting journalism mm, mm. coming out of here. So your main interest is in journalism then? Yes. Right. Who do you uh, write for now? Uh, I, I did write for the Shenzhen Daily before. I write for the, Nan, the Nanfang every day. I translate Chinese news mm. from, from Guangdong province in Chinese to English. Just like your songs, some of the articles that you write are also, uh, let's say, a bit eyebrow raising sometimes. Um, maybe that comes from you being Irish and Irish people having such a unique sense of humour. How do you think that sense of humour translates into a Chinese context? Uh, I think this type of humour is a dog whistle. Some people just get it, and if they get it, they really get it. Mm. Most people even don't even know it's supposed to be humorous. Yes. I mean, I know that it's humorous, because I think Australians and Irish people have sort of a similar sense of humor. Yeah. I think that comes from, you know, history and the fact that a lot of Australian people originally came from Ireland. Yeah. So I, I understand, but I also understand the other aspect, the other part where people who don't understand might get offended. But, you know, everybody's entitled to their own opinion. I guess. People are entitled to get offended. Yeah. yeah. I also saw online where you wrote that, um, what, oh, I can't remember what you wrote, you said, if you don't find this funny, um, no, what, what did it you was, say? I can't really it, remember it, what you said. It was, uh, came from Louis C.K. Yeah. I'm not saying you have to be intelligent to find this funny. Oh. I'm just saying you have to be stupid not to. <laughs> But that was something else altogether. So is that the attitude that you have towards your music? No, I have a very take it or leave it sort of oh, attitude. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, there is a... I do get positive feedback a lot of the time. Uh, mm. And if somebody, if somebody who, say, is, follows me on Twitter or seen a wave more and sees one of my videos and doesn't comment, I usually take that as <laughs> they're just being polite. <laughs> or, or, they, or they don't get it at all. And during most of his songs, he intends to express the confusion of ordinary Chinese people nowadays. <laughs> It's hard to deny the fact that China is growing at a rapid pace and there's huge changes every day. I mean, Guangzhou, if you came back in two years, you probably wouldn't recognize the place. How do you feel about China's rapid growth? It's the reason why we're all here. Yeah. Uh, How do you feel, like, what do you think of yourself as a part of that growth? Well, that's something I'm writing now. One of the things that attracts expats to China is this sense that we're part of this uh, transformation. I, I found being away from here was like missing a limb. Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? Yeah. You miss home when you're here, but then when you go home, you miss China. Yeah. <laughs> so that, Ch China, yeah. China is never boring. Home is sometimes boring, 
，在我的梦里，无家恨地，中国的医疗又便宜又好，外国人羡慕。中国的教育，另外男足队赢了世界杯。If you listen to your songs, if I didn't, if I hadn't met you and I listened to your songs, I probably would think you don't like China. So I want to know what attracted you to this place, which, according to you, has so many problems. Well, when、uh, in Plato's Republic, he wrote, he he mistrusted music. He wrote that there should only be two keys, and which means broadly only two types of music:、mm. patriotic songs or songs to relax people, like love songs. And when I first started looking online for foreigners singing Chinese songs. Almost all of them sang either <laughs> love songs or patriotic songs.、Mm-hmm. There was a guy named Hong Lao Wai who would sing shirtless. He would sing. No, 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 It's about how they hate every province in in Canada, but especially that they hate Toronto, Ontario most. Oh, okay.、Uh, so I, I know it was, yeah, it was potentially very very controversial.、Yeah. But one of my first comical songs was called "I Hate Hunan the Least."、And、okay. It, it says something about every province, well, most provinces.、Uh, but actually, if you read. The lyrics, most of the things that are said about the provinces, aren't that negative.、Mm. Well, the f- the first line is "Dong Dong Bay the New Hai Bu Mei," but that's an- another <laughs> another song.、Really? Goes, I I am a girl from Dong Bay, Nali the New Hai Jin Mei.、Oh. So it was making fun of this generalizing. Oh, okay,、There's、I understand. So much generalizing、yeah. goes on here. I feel that you would be a good politician because somehow. You didn't answer my question, but you made me think that you'd、oh, answer it. Why do I write about negative? No, what attracted you to China? Because、oh. you know, if I listen to your songs, I would think that you don't like China. But the, what is it ex- that attracted the you? The excitement,、mm. and、uh, I like the expat community because people who become expats in China are usually either running from something or running to something. I think you were running to something, a job.、Mm. But That's either, interesting. Either way, it's very interesting. 我要成为负责的男人，我一天比一天更成熟。现在我的唯一梦想是成为房奴、车奴。哦，但我管的，我继续做美丽的梦。不过，家人发现。他们会说我已经发疯了。So in that song, you said that you want to be a slave to the whole notion that you have to buy a house, you have to buy a car, you can't afford to get married. Is that true? Do you really want to become a slave to all those so, things? Doesn't say I can't afford to get married.、Oh. <laughs> uh, well, I want to be an Orderly, functional member of society. So,、yeah. if that's what it takes, then yeah. So, do you want to become like a Chinese person? Well, I think I have broadly have the same dreams as a Chinese person does,、mm-hmm. which is、uh, have a have a nice house and a nice family and、uh, grow old,、mm. have a long life.、Mm. I think that's a global dream. Well, everybody has different dreams, but broadly speaking, most of us just want to to live. In the world, without harming people, so owning owning a house,、mm. having some having some freedom of travel, being able to do a fair day's work for a fair day's pay, and、uh, having a a close family.、Mm.